You know, it's funny when you think about it, work takes up like a huge chunk of our lives, right? And it's not just about the paycheck, is it? I mean, most of us, we want to feel connected. Like we want our work to actually mean something. You hit the nail on the head. When those needs aren't met, and this is something Swain talks about a lot in the book, mm -hmm. it's easy to fall into stress, burnout, mm -hmm. even resentment, you know? Not exactly what you'd call a fulfilling career. No, not at all. And that's actually what made me pick up this book, A Practical Empath by Scott Howard Swain. Yeah. It promises like a roadmap to a more fulfilling work life. I mean, who wouldn't want that? What really struck me reading Swain is, is focus on action. You know, he ditches the vague advice and really gets into the how-to, which honestly I found really refreshing. Yeah, totally. One of the things he says that really jumped out at me was that, like, emotional intelligence, not just your IQ or how much you know about your field, but emotional intelligence is a major driver of career success. He even throws out a figure something crazy like 85 or 90 percent. Yeah, it's huge. It really highlights how crucial it is to connect with people, how we deal with all those emotional undercurrents at work. It can seriously make or break us. So when he talks about all that, how does Swain actually define empathy? It feels like one of those buzzwords people throw around without really explaining. You're right. It does get tossed around a lot. Ugh. But Swain is very clear on this. Empathy at work. Mm -hmm. It's not about being a pushover, suppressing what you need, or avoiding difficult conversations. He actually gives this great example of a web developer and a client. Oh, tell me more. So the client's convinced they don't need a mobile-optimized website. But, you know, the data says otherwise. Oh, man, I've been there. Wanting to speak up, but not wanting to make waves. Exactly. And like Swain points out that we usually either clam up or force our view, which helps no one. He suggests something a bit more nuanced, where the developer starts by acknowledging that the client wants efficiency, shows them they've been heard. Right. Okay, I like where this is going. And then they bring in the mobile usage data, emphasizing that this is about giving the client the best information so they can make the best choice for their business. It's respectful, honest, and I think ultimately it builds trust. It's amazing how a small change in how you say something can totally shift the whole feeling. You know, it shows you're trying to get where they're coming from, which I guess is what empathy is all about, right? Yeah, you got it. And this applies to how we deal with our bosses, too, not just clients. Oh, for sure. Gosh, I can't even tell you how many times I've bitten my tongue at work because I didn't want to seem difficult, only to end up feeling resentful later, which kind of leads to a question. How does Swain say we should handle those moments when, say, your boss isn't happy with your work? How do you respond empathetically when you're the one being criticized? Now, that's where it gets really interesting. Swain talks about this gap between the stimulus and your response. Yeah. Like someone slams you with criticism and your gut reaction is to go straight to defense mode. Oh, 100 percent. My heart starts racing and I'm like, Betty with a comeback. Right. But Swain says we can actually train ourselves to use that gap better. Instead of instantly reacting, he suggests phrases like, I'm guessing you want to trust the reliability of my word if, say, you get called out for being late. Or, I'm guessing integrity is really important to you if a project's gone off the rails. Wait, hold on. That's genius. You're acknowledging how they feel without just saying, I'm sorry, and it's not even admitting you did anything wrong. You're saying what you think they really care about in that moment. Exactly. You shift the whole conversation from blaming to, like, problem solving. Mm. Subtle, but crazy powerful. Seriously. If our listeners get just one thing from this whole deep dive, it should be that. Seriously, try that next time you're in a tough spot at work. I know I'm going to. And here's the kicker. Swain doesn't just stop at one-on-one -on -one interactions. He sees this whole empathetic way of being as something that can change companies from the inside out. Okay, now you're talking. Tell me more. Think about it. More trust, way better communication, everyone's problem solving in a whole new way. Even, like bigger profits. Okay, yeah, now that's something I think everyone can get behind. Right. But it makes you wonder, how much are we willing to put ourselves out there to be truly authentic at work to get all of that? How vulnerable are we willing to be? That idea of vulnerability really resonates with me. It makes me think about something else you mentioned earlier about the potential downsides of constantly prioritizing harmony at work. Yeah, exactly. Like, on the surface, always being agreeable, avoiding conflict, it seems like the nice way to be, right? But Swain's point is that it can actually backfire big time in the long run. Yeah, it's like everyone's nodding along, but no one's really being honest. So you end up with this kind of fake harmony that's actually, well, kind of toxic. Exactly. Yeah. Swain's argument is that when we hold back what we really think, what we need, 
even if we think we're doing it for the right reasons, mm-hmm. it can actually erode trust and lead to resentment down the line. It's like one of those communication breakdowns, right, where no one's really on the same page, even if it looks like it. Exactly. He uses this example of um, a project manager, June, who's like noticing all these inefficiencies in how our company does meetings. The COO, Mary, is running them, but they're always getting bogged down in these tiny details. Ugh, those meetings where you're like, constantly checking the clock. I've been there. Right. So June wants to suggest a better way of doing things, but she's hesitant because like the last time she tried to give Mary feedback, it didn't go so well. Mary got defensive and June felt like she was punished for speaking up. The classic shoot the messenger problem. So how does June deal with that, especially if she's worried about I don't know, making things worse with Mary. This is where empathy comes in again. Swain says, before June even thinks about talking to Mary, she needs to try to understand things from Mary's perspective. Like, what kind of pressures is Mary dealing with? What does she need in this situation? What are her values? It's like that whole walk a mile in their shoes thing, but applied to work. Yep. Swain even suggests June try to figure out what Mary might be feeling based on her behavior. Maybe she's, like, totally overwhelmed with demands from the CEO. Or maybe she's feeling insecure about her leadership. It's interesting because by trying to understand those underlying reasons, June's less likely to, you know, just take it personally when Mary reacts poorly. Exactly. And once June has a better idea of where Mary's coming from, then she can approach the conversation in a way that's more empathetic, you know, more constructive. So it's not about avoiding the tough conversation altogether. It's about, like, how to have it honestly, but also compassionately, right? You got it. And Swain actually gives some really useful tips on how to do that. Remember those phrases we talked about earlier about, like, guessing at what the other person values? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm guessing you want to be able to trust my word, or um, I'm guessing integrity is really important to you. <laughs> that stuff. Exactly. When you name those values, you're showing the other person that you see them, you hear them, and you're trying to understand their point of view. Which, honestly, how often do we really feel heard at work? It's rare. But when it happens, it can be huge. And Swain's argument is that when you approach these difficult conversations with that kind of understanding, it creates a foundation for a much stronger, more authentic relationship. And that has to be good for business, right? Absolutely. Swain actually lists a ton of benefits. More trust, better communication, people feel better about where they work, even higher profits. The list goes on. But it's not just about, like, the bottom line, you know. It's about creating an environment where people feel like they matter, where they're not just cogs in a machine. Mm -hmm. It's about remembering that everyone's human, even at work. Like, we all have our own stories, our own stuff going on, our own way of seeing the world. Exactly. And when we can approach each other with that understanding, it can really change things, not just how we deal with conflict, but how we work together, how we come up with new ideas, even how we support each other's growth. It's about bringing your whole self to work, you know? Yeah. Not just the professional version. And that makes me think about something else Wayne talks about, psychological safety. Like, when people feel safe to be themselves, to take chances, to make mistakes even, that's when you get the good stuff, the engagement, the creativity, all of it. It's such a good point. And it fits perfectly with everything we've been talking about, right? When we feel seen and understood for who we really are, it creates this feeling of belonging, of safety, which lets us actually do our best work. It's like being on a team where everyone's on the same wavelength. When you have that, everything just flows better. It does. And that feeling of connection, of being part of something bigger than yourself, Mm. that's something a lot of people are looking for in their work, you know. It's about finding meaning, purpose. Yeah. Not just clocking in and clocking out. Absolutely. And speaking of meaning and purpose, there was one more thing from the book I wanted to touch on before we wrap up. It's about how we deal with criticism in general, not just from our bosses. Oh, yeah, that's a big one. It all comes back to creating that space between... Like the thing that sets you off and how you react to it, which, let's be honest, is way harder than it sounds. Oh, way harder. But how do we actually do it? Like in the moment, it's like our brains just go on autopilot. Tell me more. I need to know. It is way harder. It's true. Our gut reaction is usually like our first reaction. Swain really emphasizes that it takes practice. But, you know, you can train yourself to respond more thoughtfully, even when you're feeling attacked. Okay, but how do we practice? Like what's the secret? Well, meditation can help with, like, just being more aware of yourself in general. Mm -hmm. But Swain's method is more about actually changing how you think about these situations. So, say, for example, your boss calls you a flake because you're late with a report. Oh, ouch, yeah. I felt that one. Right. Your instinct might be to get all defensive. But what Swain suggests is saying something like, 
I'm guessing you want to trust the reliability of my word. And like, I want you to know I understand how this impacts you. So it's about like shifting the focus. Instead of getting stuck on the accusation, you're focusing on the need or the value behind it. Exactly. You're acknowledging their feelings while also showing them you're competent, you know, that huh. you get it. So it sort of takes the heat out of the situation without just apologizing or taking the blame if you weren't actually in the wrong. Exactly. He gives another example. Um, let's say a project is like totally behind schedule, right? Yeah. Instead of getting defensive, you could say, I'm guessing you really value integrity and this might impact how the client sees you. Maybe we could talk about a solution. Oh, I like that. You're not just reacting. You're showing them you want to fix it with them. You know, like you care about their success too, not just your ego. Exactly. And that's what empathy at work really comes down to, according to Swain. It's not about being nice all the time. It's about building those stronger connections, getting everyone on the same page and making work a better experience for everyone. It really is about remembering we're all just people, even at work, right? Absolutely. We all have things that are important to us, things that set us off and, you know, our own stories. When we try to understand that about each other, even when things are stressful, it can make a huge difference. It's about bringing your whole self to work, not just the work version. Yes. I love that. And maybe that's a perfect note to end on. What do you think? I think so. So... Listeners, that's something to think about, right? How can you bring more of yourself, more empathy to your work life? What little change can you make, even just in how you talk to people this week? Who knows? Maybe those little changes will lead to some really great things. I love that. It's about those small steps. Exactly. Until next time, keep diving deep, everyone. And remember, empathy, it's not just for after work.